Well, happy Friday, everybody. How are you on this holiday week? I hope everyone's been enjoying their festivities, whatever they are, or maybe just enjoying time off, maybe sleeping a little bit more. I know um, I've not had early morning schedule, so it's been really wonderful to catch up on some rest. And uh, gosh, I just can't believe that 2023 is closing out here. We are moving fully into 2024. I still feel like yesterday was 2020. I don't know where these three years have gone, uh, but I do know that time has really, really shifted how we relate to it. And it's when I check in with 3D, it just boggles me, <laughs> quite honestly. But the energies are flowing and big things are happening. We had an incredible alignment last solstice. Um, you, some of you were here for the meditation that we did last week. But then that evening, um, I had a powerful group gathering with all of my dragon hearts from my program that are still in my ongoing close circles. And there were 44 of us, huge, amazing, multi-level geometries, and the weaving together, the cohesion point of the dimensional layers and spheres within Earth and within ourselves. And so very interesting to feel that and feel that movement in the body. And, and it's interesting as it really relates to the question that I got this week. Um, and how we process dimensional layers or how we move in and experience dimensional layering. But um, another piece I wanted to share that was not expected, uh, right before the solstice, I kept getting, um, we got that Monday, I believe it was, I had my meeting or my monthly gathering with my lair, which is my oldest dragon hearts from the very beginning. And um, the 28th, I kept saying 1228, 1228, instead of the 21st for the solstice. And as I mentioned something, I said, you know, I think there's significance to this date we need to pay attention to and all the full body tingles were hitting several of the group. And so yesterday ended up being another um, piece, another completion point of what started on the 21st in releasing Gaia and going back to August 8th when the veil was dropped completely. Well, then we were able to cohese all the dimensional layers, all the dragons were gathered and really pulled that all together last week. So isn't it interesting now, um, moving into like, all right, seven days of unfolding into that energy, going into a completion space. And what unfolded for me yesterday was another level of Gaia's completion of birthing fully into her fifth dimensional body. Um, we had pieces going on with the Akashic records that are, um, she's now connected to the multiverse Akashic records again. And for me, that really shows or demonstrates that the cohesion was complete. And when we move into our ascension, when we move into our fifth dimensional bodies, um, we go through a zero point gateway. And that gateway, there's no baggage that comes through with us. So everything that was about our previous incarnations, everything that was part of planet Earth 3D history gets coded in as uh, to our Akash, it gets added to for dragons, our pearl, that's where we carry our Akash. And... Um, wraps it into like, all right, I'm not carrying any of that forward. Now I can go and expand. And to do that, it's like sequencing and, and putting all of that into code through light language or whatever process happens for each soul to, to clear the Akash and be done with this plane. So to have this piece come in unexpectedly through um, one of the dragons, Ingor Dashne, who is um, the record keeper, the Akashic record sort of gatekeeper through the Pleiades, um, had a full expansion move through him and was able to let me know this is done this piece is done and to me that spoke volumes in saying well that what that means is that other piece of completion for Gaia that she's done like she's zeroed out zero baggage that means she can move into a light so when I share my experience with it it'll make a lot more sense because you go ah well there it is she's moved through so I had a very interesting experience many of you know I am um, um, part of the Council of Mu, the female water dragon in the tectonic plates, um, a higher aspect of myself holds that position. And so when I went in and I knew there's there's something going on here, 1228, so we went in at 1228, on 1228. And immediately I was drawn into, um, one, having to be in water. So I was actually like inundated in a shower with water to be fully in my um both elemental and energetic dragon presence, just that they, they just got that, you gotta be in the water, so okay. Um, and then within that space, immediately 
I was, it was very unexpected because I have not used the mantras for the Dragons of Mu, the Elementals and the Black and White and the Crystal in a long time. Um, there have been higher octave mantras come in uh, over the years and I don't usually need them to call in or connect with the dragons. They're a great tool and they're very useful through the book for everybody that's diving into the dragon work. But my, personally, I had not had to use the mantras in a long time. And immediately, I started sounding the mantras and was brought into feeling my full dragon presence within the sphere of 12 that those are. So there's, you know, the, all six pairs of the earth, air, fire, water, black, and white, those six pairs. And what I saw as I started to sound was um, a blue light spiral, a spiral of blue light uh, moving into the center point, moving into the crystalline core. And that was happening as, as I kept sounding, I was watching 12 spirals all coming in and merging and weaving together. And it was creating this larger interconnected spiral, sort of like something we talked about um, in to my gatherings recently, that our toroid is not just a central pillar like a donut, that the toroidal spirals are actually like multiple axes. Like if you imagine an eight-pointed star and the four axes that it holds and a toroid running through all of that simultaneously, I know it's hard for our brain to wrap around, this is what I felt was going on in this center point where all of these were weaving together. And then I kept feeling the black and the white merging greater and greater, greater, and that crystalline core expanding. And immediately as that was like showing itself, I saw two eyes, dragon eyes. And I didn't know if they were dragon right away. And close up. And it was a set of eyes that I'd never seen before. And it was very interesting because immediately I knew it was Gaia. She was looking directly at me and she was in her serpentine dragon form. And I know as a being, she's very evolved and can, and can take many forms, but she was showing me her dragon form. And as the eyes pulled out, I could see the full bridge of the nose. And it was like, it looked like plated gold. It looked like a golden um, armor, but it was part of her coloring. It was part of, part of her energetic uh, makeup and not makeup as in like what we put on our faces. <laughs> That's funny. Maybe it was. Um, but feeling that this golden and then opening her mouth and this gaping mouth. And I immediately began to feel her swallowing her own tail. She was giving me an analogy or, or a metaphor um, of completion. She was showing me now eating the tail all the way around and not just grabbing and like biting the tail, completing the spirit, like literally engulfing her entire body all the way around. And as she got to the completion point, she got to the back of her own head and engulf that and everything turned into this golden ball of light. And I knew that it was complete and she was moved fully into her fifth dimensional aspect. Um, full golden sphere of light, fully connected in her divine body and consciousness. And whatever plays out on the levels through the dimensional layers for that completing for her, it was so beautiful to see like, whew, She's done it. She's actually moved through fully into her light body. And those levels of merge that many of us have been able to achieve, even if it's for moments. Wow. Okay. No wonder this was a significant date. So this big piece with the Akashic Records and that opening up and clearing her zero point gateway, finishing and biting the completion of the Ouroboros, her own completion and to full ball of light. So I didn't plan on sharing that actually, but um, just feels really right that you guys be aware of it with all the dragon work that's going on around the world. Um, and then the other piece, the question that I really came on to answer today was from uh, someone I've been working with recently. And in their session, this specific verbiage came up and I want to talk about it because it's applicable to everybody. And so when there's questions that apply to everybody, I really like to address them on this forum because then you all benefit from the information and, and I'm not either writing it or talking about it multiple times. But um, her question was, you, and she specifically had a three-headed black dragon working with her. And many of you know, as it's shared in the book, um, black dragons can have one to three heads. Uh, I'm sure multiple dragon lineages can, but that's the only one that's ever really specifically showed it to me. And I'll be quite honest, other than when I wrote the book, I've not had a dragon with um, a multiple headed black dragon present to me 
uh, in that way. I have had other dragons um, in session with people show up where maybe had two heads, but it's very rare. And I did, oh, I'm being reminded, I actually came across a two-headed dragon in the land as one of the guardians on the east side of Lake Tahoe, um, up on a hike well off like day hike level. You gotta get past day hike distance for most people. And I finally came across it. Um, so this three-headed black dragon, the information that shared was about a three-dimensional bandwidth. So her question was, what do you mean by three-dimensional bandwidth instead of singular? And so I wanted to talk about dimensional bandwidth a bit because it's a concept that once you start really opening your heart to, you're going to realize how many bandwidths you're operating within and what your expansion is doing and what bandwidths are your guides working within. Because typically we stay in a singular bandwidth. So when I talk about dimensional bandwidths or dimensions, there is dimensional layering. So and many of you are familiar with third dimension, fourth dimension, fifth dimension, sixth dimension. Some call those octaves. Um, some call them densities, but densities can also be a framework of those. Uh, where It's where it's like a larger grouping. Um, it just depends on what you've been trying to talk about. So whatever term you use, when you talk about like here we are in 3D, we're in this very elemental polarized field as a 3D Earth experience. But even within each dimension, there's multiple layers. So I've always delineated and I'm like, oh, there's 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, just as a way to talk about it so that our brain can conceptualize. So say in like the Middle Earth dragons are more like 3.5 and we're in 3.1, say, so that you realize they're a higher vibration, but they're still within the third dimensional platform. They're still within duality and time space continuum. So um, even moving up, fourth dimension has all those octaves, fifth dimension has those octaves. And for me, fourth dimension is like the bridging um, through realms. It's not a habitable place that we explore. It's more like the passing through zone with all the keys, codes, and activators to get us into 5D and beyond. So, Multiple dimensional bandwidth, most guides will come in and they're higher dimensional beings, but they will come in and stay stabilized in usually a fifth dimensional. Sometimes they'll drop closer to a fourth just to really get a message to you. Um, they'll stay in that singular bandwidth. They'll stay at 5D so that it's a constant level of communication. You know where to find them. You can feel the vibration right. But as you accelerate and gain vibrational level, or so do they, they can then step up because the higher they step up into their true framework, the more um, information, light, they're able to share with you, the more you will remember and keep activating within yourself. And so it keeps stair-stepping you up. There are some guides that can come in and actually carry like this, what I mean by a multi-dimensional bandwidth. And usually it's not more than three, so if you imagine a being that can hold seven, eight, nine all at one time, meaning they have the ability to expand themselves and be in a framework within all of those dimensional spaces simultaneously. They don't have to singularize. They don't have to pick, oh, I got to be in seven. They can hold that. So they will keep structuring that and come down and maybe hold four, five, six in working with you or five, six, seven in working with you. If there's a reason to, if you are moving into the capacity to do that, and that happens at the um, more the the later stages of your ascension or your evolution forward of your capacity to remember how to do that. It comes along with the opening of your telepathic body. It comes along with remembering teleportation um, gifts or or like how we do that, the, the structures behind teleportation that make it work, um, the structures behind... Re, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It has to do with shape-shifting. Um, I want to say regenesis, but I don't feel like that's quite the right word that I've been using lately. So as we keep going on our path, we keep getting more and more light capacity, which holds more information capacity and memory for us. So we're moving into those higher bandwidths. So um, let's look at, for example, the Andarans. Many of you have taken the, the short Andaran class that I've had and or, or been in my programs where we talked about the Andarans. And they are very unique in that they hold a bridge of three-dimensional spaces, but they actually bridge between four, seven, and 11. That's a really advanced level being. Like they're based um, in 11 or higher, and but they're here as the 
bridgers to bring those higher frequencies in for those that are ready to be tapped up into that. And they also hold that trifold structure as a way of like, you know how you like put brackets, like when you're outlining text material, when you're taking notes in a class, say, and you um, do this sort of bracket style. I guess I should draw that because there might be some outside the US that maybe don't use the same um, formatting. So like when I take notes and I have things that are all like similar concepts, I might do this around them to give the idea, to make myself remember like they're connected. They're, there's something within that. And so coming into the ability to do that, we start getting to the place where we have capacity to do that, where we start bridging into, oh my goodness, I can actually hold that. And I would say this isn't necessarily true for everyone. It depends on your lineage, what your original soul structure is. Um, but all of the dragons have this capacity. It's whether or not they use it. And so as you wake up to your dragon self, you start moving into the ability to do that. So when I say being able to be uh, in a three-dimensional bandwidth, it means that bracketing, that's the term, that bracketing of being able to literally be within. So like for me right now, I can feel myself consistently within my fifth dimensional um, framework while I'm here talking to you. My reading space, my telepathic body is open. I'm there. I'm also physically here in this higher third dimensional space so that I can communicate through language, use my body, use my voice, all those pieces. And so there's a bridging happening between three and five. And as I get to the higher um, layerings within three with my physical body ready to start shifting into my crystalline format, that's going to actually lift me up to those higher frameworks of five so that when I'm actually in my dream state, boom, I can hop into six, seven, and those very, very quickly. That's what I mean by dimensional bandwidth. So typically dragons will hold one. Even your guides, your dragons, they'll come in and they'll hold one. But if you're ready to, or you have a framework that is trying to activate that within yourself, there may be a reason that they're coming in. So this particular one, Black Three Headed Dragon, specifically showing me in the reading that they were holding in three separate. So each of those heads that they had to engage with, and so take this home with you too, if you have a multi-headed dragon coming and, and uh, presenting to you, don't take for granted that all three heads have the same message or same work with you. They're literally splitting and generating the extra heads to be working with different aspects or potentially different dimensional aspects to move you along more quickly. It's end game, guys. We are at the final stages. That gateway is closing. My body's tingling here. And we're moving towards that 30-30 gateway where the Ascension gateways are literally going to be closing. So boom, people are popping open so rapidly right now. You're going to feel like, ah, my head's going like this. My body's going like this. Like, what is going on? You are stair-stepping and skipping steps like multi. It's going really fast now. So if you have guides presenting like that, it's a huge gift. Just be aware and ask them, you know, are you... Maybe there's two heads. Maybe they're a male and a female because they want to show the different aspects very distinctly. All higher platform dragons are androgynous. They are fully united already. They have both male and female aspects, but they will present one or the other for something that you need to specifically see, become aware of, you know, like catch from them. Everything they use is a tool. Everything, every image, every um, like visual metaphor, every analogy they send through, it's a tool to communicate with you so that you understand the deeper meaning what they're trying to do. And they're trying to put it in terms that you can get. So ask both heads. They might both be in the same dimensional space, but taking on masculine and feminine or a feminine and a um, like a, a maiden crone type of thing. Just feel into it because if they're presenting multiple aspects, there is a reason. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, I know I've been talking for longer than I expected, but it's an important question. And even the other question um, that sort of lended off of that was when I said it depends on your original soul structure. So for me, um, the term monad is your soul structure. 
your over lighting soul structure that has a core. So when I look at say a monad structure, and I know I've talked about this before too, the more evolved you are as a soul, the more complex your geometric signature. That would mean your monad is more complex. So the core of it for me in, in how I understand, remember uh, these concepts, and maybe you understand it subtly differently. Maybe your memory has other pieces of it. That's fabulous. You know, just take what I share as a trigger to remember your own pieces and knowing and the terms you use. So for me, that monad structure is having that core signature, which for me is dragon. For many of you, you're from uh, dragon realms or dragon aspect within specific realms. And so your core monad structure would be that dragon geometric. But then your monad aspect is every aspect that you have out as part of your incarnational experience and evolution, going out and being different things in different universes, planets, um, star systems, ocean, wherever they are, going out and experiencing those things adds to your monad structure. Now, other people will take it further and say, well, my monad structure is my full soul family. I believe that's another level of monad structure. So maybe you want to call this one your, your own soul signature structure or my own soul monad. But then I also have a family monad as well. And that's where all your interconnected family ties are connecting in and linking with their structures because we do tend to um, evolve, do projects with, be in service with, reincarnate with many of the same members that are our core family. It makes sense. It's what we do here on earth too. If you look at and understand your family structure here or your own dynamic of like, here I am as Araya, but I have all these aspects of myself here in 3D and I, you know, I'm a mom and I'm um, a, a guide and I'm a teacher and I'm a Cub Scout parent and I'm like a homeschooler and I have all these different roles, right? Well, if those are all part of my structure, that's my monadic structure. That's my mm, structure here on earth. Well, in a bigger way, that same mirroring up a level goes into what is the monad structure in, in my terminology on that soul level. So hopefully answering a couple of questions for you that maybe you didn't even know you had. <laughs> So the last thing I want to do today, um, and I didn't plan on talking about the monad structure either. It just sort of hit me while I was talking about the other. Um, we're moving into 2024. I think this is going to be a very pivotal. The last three years have been really concrete, foundation laying, big shifting forward. Um, I really feel like 2024 is starting to move into the uh, above the scaffolding the actual structurization, the building of the golden age, the building of the newer structure and the businesses and the school systems and the, the community and things that are what we want to actually create and have around us that are in fifth dimensional foundations. So let's hold for everybody that's on this. And I um, saw quite a few of you on the call today. So I'm glad you made it on a Friday. Um, wishing everybody a very happy new year. But let's ask for everyone that's going to listen to this um, on the replay, everyone that's in that sphere, for the energy moving forward in 2024, that we would have some insight. And I'm feeling it splitting right when this happens. It's interesting because it's almost like feeling a diamond um, sword, like splicing the deck for me. And it's splitting actually at two places. So I'm going to have to hold both cards. Um, Okay, this is very interesting. I don't know if you can see where I've split it. There's two splits. Um, this is how I usually work. I, I feel the deck fall apart and it's like watching a cleaver move through it. So right before I got on, I had to switch. I ha actually had the womb dragon, um, have had it on the wall for a couple weeks. And the diamond dragon was really insistent. Like, no, we're, if you want to talk about 2024, we're going to hold the diamond energy in. So um, having pulled the womb dragon off, I think it's interesting that because I was really reticent, I was like, but there's so much birthing going on. There's so much process of truly coming into ourselves because the womb dragon is at the core of our crystalline core. So that same monad structure, look at like for Gaia, I was talking about everything moving into the crystalline core, all the aspects around here. You can feel that you can like recognize that 
just apply that mirror to you, apply it to the larger cosmos, apply it to the universe and the multiverse, and you start to understand and grasp the concepts to a bigger degree. So I love that the Wimhara dragon is here. The specific um, word or the specific keywords for the Wimhara dragon is divine alignment, remembrance, and manifestation. That is absolutely 100% what I feel coming for um, 2024, that manifestation is not so much about intention setting and seeing or visualizing like bringing stuff to you it's really like that heart um electromagnetic field match that boom because your heart and everything has realigned it's perfect match womb creatrix yes pam now what's interesting about it is the other card coming forward with that moving into 2024 silver dragon this is Heartland. This is all about the basis of love. And it's the first octave. It's in Orion. It's fifth dimensional. It's the first octave when we move out of the elemental black white crystal formation. We move into the silver dragon. And so this is absolutely about heart softness, embrace, and surrender. So if we want to experience the realignment, the remembrance, and the manifestation, we move into full surrender, embrace, and softness. That's through the heart. All right, that's like, it doesn't get any more beautiful. Um, and I feel the diamond is in there well. I, I half was expecting to pull the diamond card because I do know a lot of diamond energy is starting to form around um, as the crystal core is complete. And there are many that are starting to move into their higher diamond aspects and activate some of that di diamond DNA, which is beyond the crystalline DNA, which is our first step getting back to all of our strands of DNA activated and um, accessible. So beautiful picture for 2024. Loving this, loving this, loving this. And so this just makes my heart actually soften feeling it. I, I feel like 2024 is going to be that year of the heart, year of that moving into softness and true guidance by the heart. You know, the heart is, yes, yeah, surrender, softness, embrace, but it's about embracing you, embracing you fully, pulling the love uh, power and wisdom together through that heart allows you to be in you and allows the magic to unfold, which is what allows the manifestation because that heart is just showing what it's aligned to. This is where you live who you be in every moment and drop into it, surrender to it, surrender to the knowing inside your heart of what is your next step, whether an action step, whether it's an in contemplation step, whether it's something just within you that says, all right, I'm going to soften and open. Let that heart lead you. So Loving that message. Wishing you guys a very happy new year. I will come on at some point next week. Never know when, but um, probably closer to the end of the week because after that, I'm actually going to be on a vacation. Woo woo! I'm <laughs> getting excited to have some time off. I've never been to the Caribbean, so I'm heading to the Bahamas. Um, so there won't be a live uh, that following week. So I'm going to definitely hit one next week, probably near the end of the week so that it's not quite so long before you see me again. And that's just saying that like knowing when I'm here and in my space and my studio and where I can do these easily. But if I have something happen and there's dragons there and I've got stuff to share, I'll absolutely come on. But for now, Happy New Year. We'll see you in 2024 sometime next week. Much love to you guys. Bye for now.